Uh, I want to talk about Andrew Cuomo. We're going to talk about the the Cuomes today. The old Cuomeister. Uh, I don't know if those are any of the nicknames that he has for himself, but I I just decided to give him some of those nicknames. Uh, Turns out, the state of New York has been throwing away vaccines. And it's not what you think, right? It's not like all of a sudden... The state of New York is like, but the microchips are, they're switching our DNA using radio frequencies or whatever conspiracy theory comes out of the, uh, the deep into the QAnon anti-vax world. Uh, and I'm not going to go into, you know, a whole debate on vaccines or not. Look, if you're, if you're an anti-vaxxer and you're, and you're not for it, okay, you don't need to come at people and, and and yell at them. And and look, if if you are somebody that's pro vaccine, you know somebody that's anti vax, don't don't shit on them for it. You know what I mean? Have a have a a, a reasonable conversation. I, I feel like this notion of civil discourse is is out the window, and the the lack of civil discourse that we've seen in our society has probably led us to the to the point that we've. Um, it's one of the contributing factors to. Um, why we are where we are, folks. But here's here's basically what happened. On December 28th, uh, Andrew Cuomo took time away uh, from his riveting uh, television series, Cuomo and the COVID, uh, and he, he signed an executive order that basically says that if any medical institution or facility or anything like that Decides that they are going to vaccinate people by skipping the lines, right? Uh, meaning, you know, category 1A is for essential workers that work in the medical field and nursing homes. And, you know, you want to start vaccinating elderly people, 75 and older, or something along those lines. Well, if you do that when it's not approved by, by the Quo Meister, uh, then you're going to get penalized. A large financial penalty as well as revoking your medical license. They will, they, so, and, and so you're, now I know a lot of people are thinking, well, yeah, pro, good, because you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be vaccinating people that don't need the vaccine first. And yes, that's true. Uh, but there's also the principle of trying to get this thing, trying to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible uh, is also part of the goal. So where is this issue coming in of, of, of throwing in the vaccines, right? That's probably what you guys are wondering about. So clinics, smaller clinics are the ones that are going to be affected and, and the ones that are being affected by this the most because that's where a lot of the throwing away is happening. So smaller clinics, you know, will probably get a smaller amount of people coming to them. So anywhere between like 10 and 15 people. Uh, and, you know, they're usually in rural areas or low-income neighborhoods. So, again, this is affecting poor people in the state of New York. And basically, you know, the one, so like one vial of Moderna, uh, which I think is, is probably going to become a, a much better and more accessible vaccine just based on the fact that you don't have to refrigerate it uh, as long as, or, or, or at the extreme temperatures is the Pfizer vaccine. And now you also have the AstraZeneca vaccine coming out that, uh, correct and, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but I believe that one doesn't need refrigeration. Um, like it's recommended to be refrigeration, but it's, but it won't, it won't expire. Like, like that, that one, I guess, farm tech or something or, or pharmacist or whatever, just removed a whole bunch of fucking like 500 people's worth of vaccines uh, and just set them out overnight and just destroyed the vaccine because the Moderna vaccine still needs some form of refrigeration. The AstraZeneca one probably won't. Um, so it would be better in that regard. And and I think they're doing some additional testing with it. So there, there might be more safety uh, with that AstraZeneca vaccine. But again, um, I'm, I'm going off a very limited basic knowledge of stuff I've heard through headlines and things of that sort. So uh, I apologize if the information isn't 100% accurate in regards to the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, but uh, going back to the Moderna vaccine, it's, it's one vial of Moderna vaccine has 10 vaccinations in it. Uh, so 
let's say you're a clinic and you only get 12 to 15 people coming into your clinic. Well, that means that you definitely still have to purchase two vials of the Moderna vaccine. So you vaccinate the 12 to 15. Now you have you have uh, five to eight more doses of the vaccine to give away. According to this executive order put forward uh, by uh, Andrew Cuomo of the hit series uh, Cuomo and the COVID, uh, you can only you you have to find somebody that uh, fits the bill. So if it's Group 1A and Group 1A is uh, healthcare workers and, and nursing home workers, then you got to go find them before this vaccine will just expire, even if it's refrigerated. And some some there there's stories of some you know clinics doing that where they'll where they'll uh, call nursing homes and they'll call hospitals, they'll call fire departments and wherever they're giving the vaccine and be like, hey, could you use an extra you know, five to eight doses of the vaccine. We got extras and, and we can't we can't use them. And if you can't, then you have to throw it away. And in a lot of cases, right, those, those bigger organizations like those nursing homes, bigger hospitals, uh, probably fire departments too, can order an excess of the vaccine. You know... Like, they can say, oh, we account for uh, 20,000 people, so what we're going to do is order 25,000 doses of the vaccine. Just so we have some extras. And, and you know, who knows? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But having a little bit more is better than having less, right? And and now, right now, there's a there's a major supply problem in, in regards with the vaccine. There, there, the... America is not making enough to vaccinate all its people, to vaccinate people on the on the scale that it was anticipating this vaccination to take place. So Cuomo's idea, and this is this is very capitalist of him, is the best way to do this properly is if you can't find somebody and the vaccines run out, you just gotta throw it away. Or else you get a million dollar fine and your medical license revoked. It's very Crime Bill 94 of a, a, a Andrew Cuomo, isn't it? That's very, that's very smart on crime of Andrew Cuomo, isn't it? If you, if you missed the reference of that, uh, 94 Crime Bill is what Joe Biden is known for. Uh, and smart on crime is what Kamala Harris is known for. Uh, so, making that comparison. But, you know, who does this benefit? Let's say that let's say that larger hospitals decide to just give additional vaccines for, for people, right? Let's say that they go, oh, you know what? Uh, we have an additional 10,000 doses and we ran out of people to give it to. Fuck it. Let's put out a call and get some get other people to register and come get the vaccine. And whether they're in the grouping that we that that is that is now being determined to get the vaccine or not, it doesn't fucking matter. We're going to get these people the vaccine because everybody needs to be vaccinated. And they get hit with a million dollars, uh, and 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 uh, the 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 revocation of of medical licenses. And guess what? The hospital can very easily afford that million dollars. And they will probably sue the state. And if there is an insurance company or, or, or a, a pharmaceutical industry that is connected to this hospital that says, hey, we need this hospital, guess what? That suit will just go away. They'll say, you know what? Make it a million five, uh, you know, and uh, give this person a disciplinary record and fucking move on. And they'll move on. But these clinics, these clinics can't afford that. Even if they say, we're not going to revoke your medical license, but you give us a million five, smaller clinics don't have that kind of fucking money. So who does this affect? It affects the clinic. So now the clinic will likely have to shut down because they can't afford this fine. And all they were trying to do is vaccinate people in their communities and make sure that this, this vaccine, whose supply is not being met with the demand, is being given to as many people as they possibly can give it to.
So Andrew Cuomo, once again, is, is targeting small clinics and poor neighborhoods. Rural and low-income neighborhoods. Those are the ones that are going to be affected by a law like this. Now, if, if Cuomo was as amazing as what he was, he would have figured something out, right? He would have not gone this direction. And by the way, this is the way that capitalism operates. Uh, capitalism operates on waste because if you create more waste, that's another thing that you... Like, n- now you have to pay somebody else to take away the waste. And not only that, but if you create waste, that means that there is more opportunity for supply, right? So more people have to buy more shit. It can reach this endless consumerism. And even in the world of the vaccine, it's not about getting the right amount of vaccine. And if you have a little bit of excess, let's give it to the people that need this vaccine. Let's bump a couple people up in the line. It's throw it away. Because who cares? The wastefulness will just mean that, you know, we'll, we'll just keep buying more vaccines, But clearly that's not working. And another, another example of how capitalism is failing. Another example of why people should not be supporting this economic system based on backwards ideologies. So here's something that I think could have very easily been implemented instead of signing an executive order that is going to essentially uh, economically cripple uh, rural and low-income neighborhoods and small clinics that people depend on. Now, don't forget, Andrew Cuomo, right before the pandemic started, when people knew that the coronavirus was still in effect, cut 900 beds out of a Brooklyn hospital, cut $400 million out of Medicaid in the state of New York. Why? So he could give tax breaks. To rich people that might vacation in the Finger Lakes, that might want to own a vacation home in the Finger Lakes. He also didn't take the pandemic seriously when it started. When he realized that he could kind of use this as political currency... He jumped on board with it. He was like, okay, let's do this. Today is Saturday. All right. Can we all confirm? Can we go around confirming Saturday, 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 Saturday? Literally something he did on one of his fucking, you know, his television show that he produces, Cuomo and the COVID. But that's how it operates. And here's the thing, man is he's gotten enough attention uh, and and enough of his fucking awful healthcare policy healthcare and economic policies will get shoved under the uh, under the rug not swept jammed under the rug and it's you know it's it's going to look all weird and lumpy and everybody's like what's underneath the fucking rug and people will be like shh 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 This guy is uh, probably going to be primarying, um, most likely primarying uh, Biden or Harris, uh, depending on (laughs) the state of that, uh, state of those affairs, in in, in, in four years, in four to six years, he'll be, he'll be the, he'll be primary. I mean, the guy's written a book about leadership. Of course he's going to fucking primary them. You wrote a book about leadership in a state that fucking... Uh, the, the, in a state where you're responsible for people not having access to health care. And that's the key word there, too, that they use, right? The, the anti-Medicare for all people, the anti-universal health care people, is access to health care. That's, that's what they throw out there, right? There, he's not even he's not even putting that up. He just wants to be a billionaire butt buddy. But he's one of those people that's deified in our culture. 
And when you deify somebody, you forget that you're allowed to challenge your leaders. And when you deify somebody like that, you walk yourself right into some form of authoritarianism. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video. Thanks again.